Hi, I'm Russ Mitchell, and welcome to Eye to Eye. Katie is on assignment. No Child Left Behind was designed to help schools across the U.S. improve performance. But with no national standard, not all states are scoring equally. Kelly Wallace spoke to one Georgia educator who says the answer is not to lower standards, but to raise expectations. What is the NAEP test? I mean, how, what is it? Well, I think it's, um, it's one reading of how our nation is doing in terms of getting kids to a point where we can really compete internationally. And they're trying, it's almost like a pulse check. You know, it's trying to go out there and take just a snapshot to ask some very important questions about are we going to, as a country, be able to educationally um, stand up against some of our competition. I think that's the importance of NAEP. When you get down to the state level, it's not something that most educators talk a whole lot about. It's not something that as a classroom teacher I thought about. Uh, but it's an important barometer for the department and the uh, work that we do because it gives us an indication of are we on the right course with regard to the expectations of our students. And um, so we use it in that way as a piece of information, not necessarily the the end-all, be-all of how our kids are doing, because I don't think it's robust enough to do that. It's not the right kind of test. It's only given to a sample of students, and um, it's not necessarily completely aligned to our curriculum. But it's a good barometer and a good snapshot and, and a good gauge as to are we moving the needle the way we need to, especially when you disaggregate. So let's talk then, You, if you look at 2005 and you look at fourth graders in Georgia, 87% proficiency in reading compared to the NAEP, fourth graders in reading, 26%. That's a big gap. Right. How do you explain it? Well, there's another level on the NAEP called basic. And then there's another group called, you know, not basic, and, and, and really, they're called below basic. And we've got three levels on our test. We've got not meeting proficiency, proficiency, and exceeds. So our definition of proficiency is much greater than the, the proficiency level as NAEP, but there's still a gap. And that's the issue that we've been dealing with in terms of rigor. Um, Georgia has known, not from NAEP scores, but Georgia's been aware of a gap in rigor and expectations from looking at SAT scores. As the state superintendent and a former teacher, you just don't roll in a new test. You've got to do it the right way, which is set the expectations in the curriculum. And that's a lot harder work takes more time, but it's the right way to do it because then people understand the, the expectations. You train the teachers on those expectations and that's how you start building uh, your capacity across your state for, to have students perform at higher levels. So despite what some people might say, uh, we, I just don't think they're looking at what Georgia has done over the course of No Child Left Behind, which is the complete opposite of what they're saying. We're actually raising expectations for our kids, not, not running away. Tell me a little bit about devising the new curriculum, first in terms of looking around the country and around the world. Where did you go and where did you get some of your best ideas from? Well, we worked closely um, uh, with national experts in all subject areas and had some uh, real positive help also from organizations that had been working with the issue of, of performance standards for, for students across the country. Uh, NCEE was the, was the group. Um, and, and so they helped us get started with all of this. And then we had national experts come in, but we also then on, for every piece of the curriculum, we had people from the university level, we had people from the high school and elementary education level, we had uh, a business advisory group that brought in people from their sector and, and parents. And um, we, we really had experts who then turned it over to classroom teachers to take expert advice as to where to go with the standards. And the whole process was we don't need to reinvent the wheel in Georgia. Um, other states have good standards, other countries have good standards, and it was the role of the expert advisory committee to put out the search for those, gather that material, and then turn it over to the experts writing the curriculum who could say, yeah, this is what we're going to ask third graders to do. If you're going to take and create a curriculum-based test, that means everyone's curriculum has to be the same for fourth grade, and I just don't think that's the way to go. I don't think that the, the political capital that would be used to try to get that done would get us any faster uh, to where we want to be in terms of rigor for kids. I think states are doing a good job of establishing standards for their students and holding 
schools accountable for getting kids to those standards.